Hey, what's going on guys? Tim here. And I just want to say thank you for joining in on this tutorial. Thank you uh, to all who have been subscribing and uh, watching these videos. It means a lot to me. Um, it, it's really cool to see this community grow and to see you guys finding these tutorials useful. It's been cool to see you sharing them and incorporating them into your projects. So I appreciate that so much. Thank you for the words and the feedback um, and just, uh, yeah, and just helping me grow this thing. So I'm excited for this one today. We got another really cool background loop. Um, this one, once we get it built, it's super easy to manipulate into other looks and other styles. Um, so we're kind of building a little bit of a generator here where you'll just kind of change the fractal noise that we'll be playing with. So as always, we are in After Effects with the default layout and stock plugins so anyone can make it. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So we need to first come over to new composition here and right off the bat, I'm gonna name this base so we can house our base composition. Um, I'm going to do this at 1920 by 1080, so we'll be in HD here. And 30 frames per second's good. And let's go to 10 seconds long on this. We'll keep this one nice and short. So let's hit OK. And we have our base composition here. I'm going to turn off the transparency grid. And I'm going to come down here to my uh, timeline area, right click new. And we're going to create a new solid here. And this will house our fractal noise. So uh, 1920 by 1080 on that. I'm just going to go to black on the uh, background color and hit OK. And so now I have a black solid here. And the first thing I'm going to do is come up to my effects and presets right here in the uh, panel. And I'm going to type in fractal noise. And that'll bring up fractal noise right here. So I'm going to double click that so it applies to my black solid here. And not much we really need to do here. We're honestly just going to keyframe uh, the evolution and that will get us pretty much on our way for the movement. So uh, let's go ahead and change a couple options. So on the fractal type, I'm going to leave that at basic, but on the noise type, let's change that to linear. And then we'll leave the invert off. On the contrast, I'm gonna crank that way up to 450. And on the brightness, let's drop that to around negative 60. So let's just do negative 60 there. And so we got some really dark darks and some uh, bright whites there. So that's what we need. We'll leave the overflow as it is. I'm gonna twirl down transform here and we'll keep uniform scaling unchecked so that we can uh, access the width and height sliders. And so on the scale width, let's boost this all the way up to 1500. And so we'll have some nice lines here, but these are still a little too thick here. So we'll change that from 100 to five and get those nice and thin. So that looks good right there. Um, already, I like the look of this. So um, the complexity, let's drop that to one. And so we'll take out a lot of that variation there. This looks good. And let's see what else we can do here. Um, I'm going to twirl up transform. And I think that looks good. I think I'm just going to keyframe that evolution now. So let's go ahead and take our playhead to the beginning. Zero frame, zero seconds. And I'm going to hit that stopwatch next to the evolution. And then I'm come back down and take my playhead all the way to the end. That will be 10 seconds for this composition. And we're just going to do one revolution. So we're going 360 degrees one time. And to make sure that if I come up to my preview here, so if I jump back and forth to the last frame and the first frame, you can see that they're different. So all we need to do to fix that is come back over to our evolution options, twirl that down, and then click on cycle evolution. And so that'll make sure that the last frame and the first frame are the same and then we'll get that perfect loop on that so looks good a nice slow animation there maybe we can crank that up we'll see we may come back and crank that up to two on the uh, revolutions let me try that yeah actually let's leave that at two so um, take your playhead all the way to 10 seconds again and we'll have that active keyframe um, where it should be one revolution, just bump that up to two and we'll go 360 degrees two times. I kind of like the speed of that a little better. So perfect. This looks great. And that is all we need to do on the black solid. So I'm going to come back down to my timeline. I'm going to right click new adjustment layer and I'll name this distort. And this will just house, uh, our effects that we're going to kind of distort this with, but, um, Pretty simple things we're going to do here. So let's come over back to our effects and presets panel. And with our distort layer um, selected, I'm going to type in wave warp. And it should come up under distort there. So wave warp, let's double click that to apply to our distort layer. And let's tweak a couple things here. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the wave type to semicircle. Looks good. And on the height, let's go to 150. 
and on the width, let's really spread this out. So 300, and we kind of get these nice curvy, billowy looks here. So that looks good on the direction. Um, let's kind of bring this around. I don't want to go in this way. So let's say 315 degrees. Looks good. So we got some nice uh, perspective there. Play through that and we're cruising on that. So let's drop this wave speed down, honestly, to like 0.1. Really get that nice and slow. Okay, that looks good. So a nice slow um, scroll here with the, you can see that variation that we have in that fractal noise kind of coming through and that looks awesome. Perfect loop. Uh, the pinning, we can keep that at none. Um, but on the anti-aliasing, let's bring that to high just so we get that nice detail in there. And this looks great. So that's all we need to do for wave warp. I'm going to twirl that back up. Come back over to my effects and presets and type in turbulent displace. And you'll see that pop up. Let's double click so that lays right on top of the wave warp. I don't want this too strong, but I just want to give this a little more variation than the uh, perfectly stacked look it has. So let's go ahead and change this a little bit. On displacement, I'm going to change that to twist smoother. On the amount, let's drop that to 25. And on the size, I'm just going to crank that way up to 1,000. Let me turn that on and off. And you can see now we have just a little bit of variation. Like it's leaning a little more. We have some curves. You can honestly play around with this if you want, but I kind of like this right here. So yeah, that looks good. Nothing else we need to do here because we're not going to play with that evolution on the turbulent display. So I'm just checking and making sure that my first frame and my last frame are the same. It looks good. So we're still in that perfectly seamless loop, which is exactly what we want. So this is great. I'm going to twirl up turbulent displace and we're good on this base layer. So we'll fix all these gaps um, in the next composition and we'll get this thing uh, squared away. So I'm going to come back up to my project panel here. I'm going to click that new composition icon and I'm going to name this one FX 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second and 10 seconds long should match our base composition and let's hit okay. And so we have our FX layer here and this is kind of where we're going to give this thing some life. So I'm going to come up and grab my base composition in my project panel and drop that into my empty FX panel. And right off the bat, I'm going to right click in my timeline area, hit new adjustment layer, and then do that four times total. So this looks good. And so we should have four adjustment layers here. And we're going to name this first one levels one. The second one, let's name that distort again. Third one, blur. And the fourth one, levels two. And this will coincide with uh, with our plugins that we're going to be using here. So first off, let's go to the level ones adjustment layer. I'm going to come over to my effects and presets and type in levels and double click on levels. So all we're going to do here is just change the gamma and kind of boost up those whites a little bit um, so that later on it'll get some nice glows. So I'm going to come down here to my gamma and go 1.95. You can see now those whites are a little more pronounced in there. And that's really all we need to do there. So let's come back to our timeline. I'm going to hit distort. And we're just going to add a couple effects here, kind of to give this thing a little more dimension. So I'm going to come over to my effects and presets, type in sphere eyes. And that'll be under distort there. Let's double click that, making sure it's on our distort adjustment layer. And all I'm going to do on the radius is bump this up to 1500. And you can see we kind of fixed that gap now. Um, if I turn that back off, you know, we had these uh, spaces right here. I turn that back on, it looks like we have that gap fixed and that's perfect. So let's add one more thing here. We'll go to a CC lens and double click on that. And let's change the size to 180, bring that back out. And then I'm going to drop that convergence to negative 100. Kind of bring that back out and actually let's take this size, not to 180, let's go, let's try 400. We'll bring that back and that looks good. So if I turn that on and off, you can see we're kind of warping a little on the edges. See if I can drop this sphere eyes a little. It might be too much. Let's go to let's go to 1300 on that sphere eyes. And yeah, I like that a lot. This is a good look. So you can kind of see it's almost like it's rotating off the edges here. And then kind of you kind of get that sphere look like. We're zoomed in on a rotation, which I really like. So that looks great. I'm going to come up to my blur. 
and click on that blur adjustment layer and go to my effects and presets. I'm going to type in CC cross blur and double click on that so that it applies to the blur. And all we're going to do here is just kind of give it a little distortion. So on my radius Y, let's go to 25 on that. We'll keep it on blend here and the repeat pixels, we'll keep that on as well. So if I turn that on and off, you can see we're just kind of softening some of these edges here, giving it a nice, uh, more realistic look where it's kind of lighting and shadows and everything like that. So uh, that's all we need to do on the cross blur. Super easy fix for that. And so I'm going to come to my levels two one more time and go up to my effects and presets and type in levels again. And we'll apply one more levels to this. And on my gamma, let's just drop that to 0.75. Kind of bring out the definition again. So you can see we're kind of getting a more three dimensional look, which is nice. Uh, really playing with those contrasts that we're getting from the fractal noise and making this look just a little bit more realistic. So I like how this is looking. And um, already this is a really cool loop, just how it is. But let's go ahead and add some glows and lights to this and finish this thing off. So that's all we need to do in this FX composition. I'm going to come back up to my project panel, go to my new composition icon, and name this one Render. And we should have all the same uh, properties that we've had this whole time. So hit OK. Come up to my project panel. Grab that FX composition. Drop that in. And in here, I'm just going to create two more adjustment layers to house our effects. So right click new adjustment layer. And one more time. And this first adjustment layer, let's name that color. Second one, let's name that boost. And that's exactly what we need there. So on the color adjustment layer, I'm going to click on that. Come over to my effects and presets and type in four color gradient. So four hyphen color gradient. And you can see that default applies obviously super ugly, but uh, let's go ahead and play with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is this blending mode right here. I'm going to change that to color burn so that we get those colors right on there. Um, and obviously these colors are too harsh, maybe a little too bright, um, and just not blending well. So let's go ahead and just kind of play around with these. And this is all up to you, um, but I'll just kind of play around with this. You can follow along as, as close as you like or just experiment for yourself here just a little bit. But um, I'm going to get some colors here that are pretty close in the range. So um, again, I won't really, I won't really like give you guys the hex codes that I'm using here, just because I want you to maybe experiment with this a little. But I'm going to go with this kind of orangey look, this orangey red look, um, maybe a little more on the glowy, fiery side, some good shadows in there. And then I'm going to play with these anchor points down here um, and kind of move these around. Maybe get those brights on the brighter areas and those darks and those crevices right there get that red coming up and i already like that so you can see because of that gradient we're getting those speculars a little bit that looks super nice yeah i love how that's looking that's perfect so i'm gonna bring that back to the beginning and again you know you can change this blue pink green whatever you want um or just try different other colors but i like how this uh kind of reddish orange glowing look is and so not much else we need to do so i'm going to come back down to my timeline hit that boost adjustment layer and let's add a little bit of glow um, and a little more contrast to this so the first one i'm going to do is glow over my effects and presets i'm going to double click on that making sure it's landing on my boost adjustment layer and all i'm going to do is change these three top properties so on the threshold Let's jump to 75. On the glow radius, let's boost that way to 600. And on the intensity, I'm going to go to 4.5. If I turn that on and off, you can see we're kind of brightening up this area, really selling that glowing edge effect right there, which is really nice. So you can see how that's coming out. It's almost like that shine. Yeah, I love that. Coming across the screen there. Yeah, that's perfect. So that's all we need to do on the glow. I'm going to twirl that up, come back to my effects and presets, type in brightness and contrast, double click on that. And on the brightness, let's boost that to 50. And on the contrast, I'm going to drop that to 100. And so we got a really nice deep, deep shadows. That red's really popping through. 
And then the brights are nice and yellow, golden, really glowing there. I love that. This looks great. And then one more thing we're going to do here is over on our effects and presets, I'm going to type in cross blur one more time. Double click on that. And on the radius X, let's change that to 100. Maybe 200. Yeah, I like that. So let's keep that radius X at 200 and everything else can stay the same. But you can see by doing that, we're really selling that light coming through. If I turn that off, you know, it's super harsh right here, which is still a good look really defined, but I feel like this kind of gives it some kind of lens blur, maybe a little fog, a um, little atmosphere in there. Still buying those glows. Yeah, I love that. Might come down here and stretch this out just a little. I don't ever recommend scaling things like this, but Felt just a little narrow for my taste, but that's up to you too. So let me play through this real quick. Yeah, this is looking really good. So we're getting that distortion coming off the edge almost like it's pulling, and then it's billowing across the screen, perfectly looped. Those glows are super nice. Yeah, I love how this looks. You could come back through here and maybe tweak a bit on the waves. Um, if I come up to the wave warp, maybe the width is a little too, if I drop that to 250, back over the render, yeah, we get a few more columns in there. Yeah, I like how this is a lot better, but as I said, it's easy just to go back and tweak a couple properties and get a whole new look. So it's like we added a few more of those billowy columns in there, which is a lot better. And then, man, that glow just looks so good coming across the screen there. I love that. Um, super easy, perfect loop based off that fractal noise generator with literally two keyframes and we get this result. So that's all I wanna do is show you how easy it is to make these visual loops um, for anything, projects, presentations, LED walls, uh, lyric videos, you know, there's so many applications for this. And uh, yeah, that's my favorite thing is to show you guys this. So as always, thank you so much for joining me on this one. I've been really enjoying talking to you guys over on Instagram. There's been a few of you dropping me ideas, sharing projects with me which has been super cool to see. I love how you guys have been sharing your work with me. So head over to Instagram at Timmy Dwyer, hit me up over there, or you can drop some comments below. I always love hearing your feedback on these videos, ideas, uh, critiques, anything that I can make these uh, videos better in these tutorials. So, and as always, you can head over to my store, radloops.com, find some assets, find some things for your projects to help make your life easier because we all need that in our work. So um, hopefully you guys find those useful as well. I'm gonna be trying to upload more there. I know I haven't in a while, um, but my time's getting a little more freed up, so I'm going to be able to create some more things for you guys and uh, provide you with some more assets and freebies and all that. So be on the lookout for that soon. I'll update you when that happens. But I can't wait to see you on the next tutorial. This one's super rad. But until the next time, I hope you all have the best day.